Hello again. We're going to do another book review. My name is Jason, and the book we're reviewing today is uh, Something from the Night Side by Simon R. Green. Uh, Simon R. Green has um, done quite a few different series. The Night Side is uh, one of the ones that I like the most. I was introduced to Simon R. Green through the Hawk and Fisher series of novels. Um, the Hawk and Fisher series of novels actually intertwine as well with the Forest Kingdom series that he did. Um, but uh, one of the things that I find interesting uh, about the about Simon R. Green's uh, novels is that, and his well, the stories, <clears throat> is that it, his stories are kind of mashups. He takes two genres of of, uh, of books and um, puts them together. So um, Simon, so something from the Night Side, for instance, in my mind, it's a uh, pulp PI type novels, but there's a supernatural uh, fantasy uh, horror element that's been uh, woven into it, and it works really well. Um, for instance, the, the uh, Hawk and Fisher novels, to me, those are police procedure meets fantasy. Hawk and Fisher are uh, city guards in Haven, <clears throat> and they deal with um, wizards and... Uh, vampires and all sorts but there's also this pr police procedure that goes through it where like they get dispatches from the station and there's a uh, a wizard back at the uh, um, at the police station basically that sends them a telepathic message they have this the SWAT team but it's not special weapons and tactics it's special wizardry and ta tactics so quite interesting um, Something from the Night Side is the first book in the Night Side series, and you're introduced to uh, John Taylor, who is a PI. John Taylor, when you are introduced to him, he's kind of a down on his luck uh, PI living in London, uh, and a lady, Joanna Barrett, <coughs> comes into his office and wants to hire him to find her daughter. Her daughter is missing in a place called the Night Side. She's not entirely sure what it is, but uh, she's had other private eyes and uh, find, trying to find her daughter, and only the only thing they could come up with was the night side. And uh, when she looked into it, she was told to go see John Taylor. Now, John Taylor used to live in the night side. The night side is a square mile of um, city hidden inside of London. Uh, if you know anything about the the history of London, you'll know that London is actually made up of two different cities. There's London and the city of London that's inside of it. Um, and this night side kind of goes along with that. It's a supernatural uh, city that's hidden inside of London where it's always 3 a.m. Um, <clears throat> that's not to say time doesn't pass or that a time passes differently. It's just that uh, basically it's been it's kind of hard to explain it's like time passes normally in the night side but the environment of the night side is frozen at 3 a.m. so the moon is always in the sky it um, at set kind of and the stars and everything and if you look up it's and you know how to tell the time by the position of the moon and the stars it's always 3 a.m. so the Sun never comes up um, and <clears throat> it is, like I said, it's hidden inside of London. You can only go there if you know how to get there or somebody takes you. So John Taylor is a private investigator living uh, living in London. He ran away from the night side because of enemies that he had there, and he doesn't really want to go back. But he has a hard time t turning down uh, a request for help and a pretty face. Uh, he, uh, Joanna wants to find her daughter. Her daughter is in a very dangerous place, and that's two damsels in distress, something that John Taylor doesn't take lightly. So he takes the case, and uh, he and Joanna go to the night side, um, where they meet up with various denizens of the night side. And denizens is a good description, because uh, monsters, heroes, gods, demons, they all live in the night side. They're all part of the night side. Um, for instance, uh, John meets up with Susie Shooter, the most uh, notorious, also called Shotgun Susie, the mo 
she's the most notorious uh, bounty hunter in all the Night Sire, and most successful, too. They also meet up with Alex Morrissey, who runs the oldest bar in the world, Strange Fellow. Strange Fellows. Strange Fellows was once owned by Merlin. Yes, the wizard Merlin. Um, and now it's owned and run by Alex uh, and his family. Alex is the last in, in his line, and so uh, he inherited it from his father and, and so on. Um, there's also Razor Eddie, the punk god of the straight razor. He uh, is an... Ex uh, I'm trying to remember the exact phrasing an extremely disturbing agent for the good. Uh, Eddie was granted uh, godlike powers, and he uses them for good, but uh, he is very much a um, take-no-prisoners kind of uh, agent for the good. Um, <clears throat> but in the process, you find out that John Taylor, when he lived in the night side, uh, he actually has... And I shouldn't say lived, but when he's in the night side, he has access to a supernatural gift. Uh, his mother, who we don't know anything about at this point, um, basically bequeathed him this supernatural gift, and um, he has the ability to find anything, and that's why he's a private investigator. He doesn't deal with divorce cases. He doesn't try to, to puzzle together clues. He finds things for people, um, and that's not always something that can be found uh, by a normal person. Like, uh, for instance, when he goes into the night side, he tries to find Kathy, and he finds where she entered the night side, and kind of the path that she took to get into, uh, into the night side. Um, but he ends up being blocked, and he can't follow her further. But uh, he, he finds traces of her, uh, like you would if you were tracking. Um, kind of footsteps and things like that. Not exactly footsteps. He, he's more of a, a, like, ghosts of time kind of thing, where he finds that she passed this way. But he can find things like your lost innocence. Um, if there's a way, he could find a way to um, transport gold from Fort Knox straight into his pockets. Um, he tends to be much more um, honorable than things like that but he definitely is not one to um, hold back if, 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 if something requires his, um, his full effort. Uh, so very much if you're interested in uh, supernatural and you're interested in kind of detective fiction, this might be a good, good fit for you. It's, uh, it's got all of those elements all bundled together, and they work rather well. There's a couple of things that um, kind of get old about it. He always talks about his private eye, his third eye. Um, he always says that he opened his eye, he found this thing, and then it was the easiest thing in the world to yada, yada, yada. That kind of gets old. But aside from that, um, it's a very good series, uh, very, uh, very well done on the creepy aspects. Plus, he brings in a lot of um, folklore and things. John Taylor meets, uh, like, the Fay Court, at, at uh, not necessarily in something from the night side, but, with, you know, there's Queen Mab and King Oberon and Queen Titania, and these are all woven in um, to the night side story. So definitely a good read, definitely worth checking out if you're into um, kind of detective fiction and supernatural suspense and horror kind of stuff. So um, definitely, definitely something you should check out. Uh, we'll come back again and we'll talk uh, probably about more uh, of the time series from Madeline L'Engel. I think that's how you say her name. I'm not, don't quote me on that. Uh, but we can also go in a completely different direction. So if you're interested in a specific topic, a specific book, let me know. If you um, were interested in what I talked about, go see the other videos. Uh, also, like and subscribe. Thanks.